Hallelujah. Oh, my, my God. Okay. Go. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Oh, God, we bless your name this morning. You are mighty. You are awesome, God. God, we thank you, God, for bringing us together one more time in your name, God. And, oh, God, we don't take it for granted. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your presence in this place. And, God, we thank you that your word is about to go forth, God. And we know, God, that you have a word for your people. Now move by your spirit, by your power, God. Go on and just speak through me, God. I just turn myself over to you as the vessel that you want to work through on today, God. Oh, God, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Oh, I know you have a word for the people who have come and pressed their way to your house today, God. Now, God, move by your spirit. Move by your power, God, in your word. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. And thank God. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. God had sent Isaiah to comfort his people when they were at their lowest point. In life, the Syrian powers had invaded and conquered their lands. They had nearly given up hope, thinking God had abandoned them. And Isaiah comforts them with these words Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the the Lord, the, the creator of the ends of the earth, sainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but... They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. He comforts them with these words. And we want to take a look at three things from these passages of Scripture. Number one, the eagle's wings. Number two, his patience. And number three, his flight. The eagle's wings, his patience, the eagle's patience, and the eagle's flight. And uh, we're going to preach from the subject this morning. God's going to call you higher. Just wait and see. God's going to call you higher. Just wait and see. The eagle's wings. I found out in my research that um, the eagles, you know, and and, I mean, I can see it for myself. You know, I can look online and see an eagle. I don't think I've ever seen an eagle. uh, Have I? I don't know. But anyway, (laughs) they have big and heavy wings. They're big and they're, they're heavy. And the eagle is, is big. He's a big bird, you know. And um, But the, the wings are so big and so heavy that um, they don't flap their wings like other birds. You know, you, other birds, when they fly, they, they're flapping their wings. And some of them are so small, their wings go, they flap their wings like this. But the eagle, don't, they don't do that. Their wings are so heavy. And I found out that the eagle will die if they expend too much energy flapping their wings during flight. They rely on the wind 
to get up under their wings, and then they mount up and they soar. We are expending too much energy, flapping our wings, trying to help God. We just want to do it ourselves. We're flapping our wings all over the place and, and, and we're dying. And verse 30 says, even the youth shall faint and, and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. Listen, when you think about the young people, when we think about these kids running around here, we think, we look at them, we say, you got so much energy, my goodness. And, and, and we say, well, I, can't, I couldn't run, I couldn't run so fast as these kids. Look at, and they just go on and on and on. And they say, even the young men will, 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 will faint and be weary and, and, and they shall utterly fall. But the eagle, but, but he wants us to be like the eagle. The eagle relies on the wind. He waits for the storm to come. come on. But how are you handling your storm? Flapping your wings, trying desperately to get out of your storm, or, or will you rely on it, or, or will you will you trust in in, in the wind that, that that comes up under your storm? You, you so, too many of us are are, are are flapping our wings, and and we, we're just we're just we're just we're just making life worse for ourselves because we're trying to do it ourselves. How many of us know that 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 that, that flapping our wings is not going to help us? We gotta learn how to trust in God. And so the eagle, his wings are so heavy, we found out that, that he would actually die if, if he started flapping those heavy wings while he's trying to fly. Some, he, he, he would, he would exhaust himself. How many of us are exhausted today? We're tired, we're tired, we're exhausted. We, we can't handle no more. We can't do it anymore. And that, that should be, give you an indication as to, 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 to what could be possibly going on in your life. That when you get to that place, these people I, uh, that Isaiah was talking to, they were tired. They, they were afraid. They, they were ready to give up. They, they had gone through so much stuff and the storms of life was taking them over. And many of us, the storms of life, it's taking us over. We just, we just flapping our wings. We just, we just keep flapping because, because we know that we need to fly. We know that we need to get above the situation. But, but, but we, we just don't know how, and we just keep flapping our wings. And, and God saying, No, you, you, you're, you're expending too much energy. And He wants us to learn how to flow in Him. Ah, glory to God. We gotta learn how to flow. In the spirit, God says, um, uh, uh, the Bible says, for it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God says, I work in you to do my good pleasure. How about letting me do that? How about moving aside and letting me work in you to do my good pleasure? And then the, uh, Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing. <laughs> That he which hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Somebody better hear me here. He says, I'm, I'm going to perform it if you let me. Yes. But see, I heard somebody tell me, told me before, you know, you keep getting in God's way. And God, God, God says, come on, I got this. Let me get it. Let me get it. <clears throat> and every time God tries to get it, you start flapping your wings. Wow. And you, you're like, well, God, I got it. I think I got this one, God. And you flapping your wings, and then you start feeling so desperate, and you start feeling a certain kind of way, and you think it's God who's doing that to you. And when it's not God, it's you yourself. You're not allowing God to show you how to flow in the Spirit. And so God is saying to you today, he's saying to us today, he's saying, listen, listen, move out of my way. I need you to, to move out of my way because I'm, I'm trying to call you higher. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to get you to a certain place. And, and, and a lot of us, we don't, we, 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 we don't understand what God is trying to do. And we keep looking at our storm. We keep our focus on our storm. We, we keep our focus on the things that are happening in our lives and, and we think we can do something about them. And God said, keeps trying to tell us, no, I got this. He said, I got this. And so then 
you know, we're flapping our wings desperately to get out of the storm. We won't rely on the storm to take us above the storm. We won't allow the storm to take us above the storm. And then let's look at the eagle again. The eagle is patient. I found out he's patient. See, what happens is the eagles will remain perched for days before they can catch a good strong wind where they can launch on to and soar above the storm. Wow. I learned that the eagle can can see a storm from far away. He he got his eyesight is so it's, it's so so it's so piercing that he can see the storm from far away and he'll sit there. And just for days he'll he'll sit there with his wings down. And, 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 and as he's sitting there with his wings down, I, I saw in a, a, a video a man was showing, he was, he was showing, he was, tr- he was showing us about a, a trained eagle that he had. And, and this, this eagle had been in movies because he, he knows that he can't just grab any old kind of eagle and, and, and think he's just going to take that eagle and, 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 and try to show, some, show us something with. Because that eagle would tear him apart. Okay, eagles are, are very big and they're very dangerous. This eagle was trained, and he had him in the studio, and um, he 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 told he said he said he was saying that you know he wants to show us how eagles fly, right? And so what he did was he had the, the wind had the, this man to to blow some wind. The wind was twenty to twenty five miles per hour, and 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 so when the eagle began to feel the wind. Um, the eagle began to really get in position. So the man had, he had the eagle on his, on his arm right here. And the eagle's little legs, little feet was uh, ha- hanging on his arm, right? And he had him like this. And then all of a sudden, the eagle started to, to feel the wind, right? And when he started feeling the wind, the eagle got in, in position. And all of a sudden, you know, feeling the wind, his, his wings started to, to come up, right? And, and, and then, it comes up and it comes out, you know, to the point where um, the wings um, are, are, are stretched out wide. And, and then he was showing that he has these little things, little things looking like fingers on the end. And he said these things are uh, what keeps the eagle balanced. And, and so the eagle, all of a sudden, you see the wind just blowing at the eagle. And he's now all of a sudden his wings, instead of him being perched, he's not perched anymore because he feels the wind underneath his wings. And he begins to, begins to wait, put his wings up and, and, and those wings are so wide and they're just standing out. He's standing there now. Now he's standing and he's on, on the man's arm, right? And the man says, now look at him. Take a look at him. Okay, now you see, you saw his position before. Now you see his position now. It looked like the eagles, when well, he was on his tippy toes, right? Like, okay, all right, this is it, this is it. And he said, okay, now he's getting ready to jump. He's, get, he's getting ready to jump because he feels the wind. And all of a sudden, he did his arm like this, and the, the eagle just jumped off. And he started soaring in the place. He started soaring. He didn't flap his wings. He didn't, he didn't go all like, you know, like, ooh, ooh, uh, no, 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 he started soaring. And if you can just wait for the wind of God. See, cause, cause we know when a storm is coming in our lives. We all know, we, 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 you, you can feel, you can see it, you can, you can, you can see it, it drum it up, you can see something happening, and, 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 and sometimes we get, we get scared, we get, we get so, so, so afraid when we think that the storm is coming, something is about to happen, I know it, I feel it, I see it, something is happening in the atmosphere, a storm is coming, and we start running around trying to fix things, and, and flapping our wings, and, and getting, trying to get, instead of getting in a position, a, a, a perched position, and, and just wait for the, for the storm to come because the storm is supposed to do something for us. That, 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 that. see, when we think God will, will do one thing, God is doing another. The storm, hallelujah, is not meant to harm you. It's not meant to hurt you. We 
we got to learn how to gather ourselves and, and begin to encourage ourselves before the storm. So while you're perched, you, you're gathering yourself and, 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 and you're, getting your, you, you, you're getting in that word and you're praying. You say, oh God, I feel the storm coming. God, I see it. I know it. I see it. It's on the horizon. God, I know it's coming. But I know you're here with me. You'll never leave me, nor will you forsake me. You begin to draw strength from the Lord and, 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 and you know, you, you pray, you pray. I mean, have you ever prayed and, and you begin to, to feel lighter as you find renewed strength? You start feeling lighter, right? So when the guy had the, had the bird on his arm, the bird was on his arm and, and he said, he says, um, he, look at him, he, he, first he was perched and then the wind started coming. When the wind started coming, the bird, he began to, to get higher and higher. And then he was on his tippy toes. And the guy says, I can barely feel him. He's, he's gotten lighter, you know. And he, it, I, I, can, I can barely feel that, that he's, he's on my arm because it's, it's, he's got, now he's gotten lighter. How many of us, you get lighter when you start praying and you start talking to God. He, you start feeling like something has come up off of you. You start feeling God's presence in your life. You get lighter. As you find renewed strength, you get lighter. And you're feeling lighter because you've allowed the storm that was to take you under, to take you over, up over your situation. See, you don't even realize that that's happening to you, that you, you, you're, you're in a position now that, oh, my God, you know what I see? But see, some of us, we stop there. <laughs> You can't stop at the point where you feel lighter because, see, that, that makes you feel better, right? And that's that feel-good kind of, kind of relationship that you got with God. Oh, once he makes me feel better, then I'm, 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 I'm fine because now I can do this on my own. I got this, God. You're here. You ain't going, you ain't going nowhere. You're just here. And you're feeling good. This feels great. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yes, this feels great. And, and, and so you, you're standing at the place where you're feeling lighter. And you feel like, listen, I can do this now. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to go any further. This feels good. And you pack up your stuff and you go on home and you go on with your life. But you forget God had more for you. You see, that's what the thing, the thing about us, we, we give up too soon. We let go too soon. We don't know what God is trying to to do with us. You don't know how God is trying to prepare us. You don't know what he has in store for us in our lives. And God said, you done gave up too fast. You done, you, 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 you got a little bit. You know, sometimes it only takes, it takes, just give me a little, a little fix and I'll be fine. Just give me a fix. We don't want all of God. We don't want all of God. We, we, we just want to feel lighter. <laughs> But see, we got to understand that you're feeling lighter because you've allowed that storm that was supposed to take you under, to take over the situation, take you over the situation. You allowed that storm. Hallelujah. And so sometimes eagles will remain perched for days before they can uh, catch a good wind storm. But we got to understand that we need to understand that staying perched, we can't stay perched. We got, we got to begin to, to get up and, 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 and feel that wind up under us. And, and when we feel that wind up under us, uh, uh, we got to know that there's another step to this thing. Because see, the eagle, he was feeling the wind and he was feeling good. But there was another step. He couldn't just stay there. We can't just stay there where we feel good. We got to know that there's another step. You got to jump off. <laughs> you got to jump off. Like, you know, they would take an eagle up. The eagle, uh, uh, a man, another story that I read about, the, the, the eagle, and uh, they took an eagle up to the, to the, to the um, mountaintop, and they, and they threw him out, and they, they, they wanted the eagle to know that he was an eagle, and they threw him out. And the eagle didn't want to fly. He didn't want to fly because he was afraid. And... But we got to understand, as, as, as God's people, we got to know that we are like an eagle. And that he's saying, well, we got to fly 
like an eagle. We got to soar like an eagle. And I'm going to tell you about that story. I got to get back to it. But I'm going to tell you about the story in a minute. But I want to get back to that. But I want to finish telling you about this, that we got to fly like the eagle. And so he says, here's flight, okay? Um, you can't stay perched forever, waiting for the wind, feeling lighter, okay? Because when the wind stops, You're in the same place. When the wind stops, you're in the same place. You, you, you ain't went nowhere. And, and that's what happens with us when the wind stops. See, when the wind stops, we, we feel in God's presence all over us, and we're all happy and excited and everything. And then, you know, God said, well, it was another step to that, and you missed it because you didn't jump off. You didn't have faith. To jump off. You didn't have faith to believe that, that, that I had another step for you. And, but when, the step, when it comes to the step that you have to make, you're scared to make the, make the jump. You can't stay perched forever. Soon you will have to take that big jump. And you've got to begin to soar. You will have to take that flight. You will have to take that flight. And so... You know, he's patient, and he waits. And that's what we got to understand is that we got to be patient. We, gotta, we, can't, we, can't, we can't rush things. We got to trust that, that God's got this. God knows what he's doing in our lives. He knows how he, knows how he wants to work in our lives. We got to be patient. And then, you know, there's some, there's, some, there's some of us who don't understand that, but how many of us know that when we want something or when we need something to happen in our lives, that it's hard to just wait. It's hard to wait, right? We, want, we, we can't wait for, for, for uh, uh, people. We hate to wait for people because people, they get on our nerves because you can't depend on people. People will disappoint us. You know, we wait on the bus. And when I, you know, I, when I was catching the bus and then going to high school, I walked to school almost every, every, every day every, because I, I was too impatient. I didn't want to wait on the bus. We don't want to wait on a mailman. When we're waiting on a check, when we're on, and wait, it's coming back and forth to the door, like, is the mailman coming? Like, where is the mailman? Now, the day is email. We're waiting on an email. Somebody, will you please send me an email? I'm waiting on an email. I'm waiting on a text. We can't, we gotta wait. And we don't like to wait. <laughs> But it's a different kind of wait when we're waiting on the Lord. Somebody better hear me here. It's a different kind of wait when we're waiting on the Lord. Hallelujah. When we're waiting on Him. But we sometimes like, like, we like to treat it like we're waiting on a mailman. We like to treat God like we're, we're, we're frustrated with Him and we're angry and we're tired and, and we're ready to give up. You know, we, 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 we treat Him like we're waiting on a, 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 a bus or something and God's saying, no, it's a different kind of wait when you're waiting on me. When you're waiting on me. Hallelujah. See, waiting on the Lord is different. Listen to a few of the testimonies about him. See, you won't, you won't notice unless you tried him for yourself. And I know we got some testimonies in this house today. People who have tried the Lord for themselves. And they know that waiting on him, hallelujah, is, is, is the best thing that they've ever done in life. Hallelujah. Psalm 121 says, I will lift up my eyes. A songwriter wrote this. Let me tell you about these songwriters, man. I'm telling you, they're they some powerful, powerful people. Because they write what they know. They write what they know. They write what they believe. They write what they've been through. And they wrote, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. And then another songwriter wrote, he wrote, um, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. How does he know this? Hallelujah. How does he know this? See? How, how does he know it? See, that's who we're waiting on. He knows it because, because he's been there. He understands that, that, that he, God had to be his refuge in one, one time in his life or some time in his life. He had to be his strength. Hallelujah. He had to be his ever-present help in time of trouble. And I'm telling you here today, you got to know him for yourself. you got to understand that, that God can do this. And Solomon said, he said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. 
He said the righteous run into it and are safe. I'm telling you, son, he had to know something about being in trouble. He had to know something about calling on the name of the Lord. He said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Somebody got to understand that you can call on the Lord. It says the righteous run into it and are safe. David said the Lord is my shepherd. He said I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. David had to know something about God to be able to write something like that. Or be able to understand something like that. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff. They comfort me. Thou prepares before me a table in front of my enemies. Hallelujah. And surely, he said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He said, and I will dwell. Hallelujah. In the house of the Lord forever. David had to know something about it. To say something like that. And they sang these songs. Hallelujah. That encouraged them in their time of trouble. A bail and prophesied. God is not a man that he should lie. How do you know that? How did he know that? Neither the son of man that he should repent. How did he know that? Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? See, if God has never done anything for you, you don't understand what he can do for you. If you don't ever try God, if you don't ever live your life and trust in him and allow the wind to get beneath your wings, hallelujah, and flow in his spirit, if you don't ever go there with God, you don't ever try him and get to that place, you won't know him like this. David's chief musician said, and the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Hallelujah. And then another chief, the chief, the chief musician says, um, he, 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 cause the, for the Lord, God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. He says, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk Uprightly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's so good that they had to write about him. They had to sing songs about him. Yeah. And he said, he, he ain't going to withhold no good thing. Hallelujah. From you. Whatever it is that you're seeking from the Lord. We're looking for from the Lord. I don't care what it is. If it's a good thing that comes from the Lord. He said, I will not withhold it from you. Well, we got to learn how to wait on the Lord. Yeah. And then David says, for thou art my lamp, O God. He said, O Lord, and, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. He will brighten your, your darkness. Yes, he will. When you're walking in and you can't seem to find your way. And you don't know which way to go, to the left or to the right. God, David found out that God was his lamp. He said, you are my lamp, O Lord. And the Lord will lighten my darkness. He says, for by thee. I have run through a troop. Hallelujah. He said, by my God, I have leaped over a wall. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, this is the way he, he, he knows God. You understand? See, because he done tried him. He, 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 tried, he got out there and he tried. And he said, as for God, his way is perfect. The Lord, the, the way of the, the word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all of them that trust him. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to know the Lord like that. Somebody needs to understand that the Lord is, is good to us and, and that he is with us and that he will never leave us. Hallelujah. Nor will he forsake us. Jesus told his disciples, if you go with me to Acts chapter uh, 1. Go to Acts chapter 1 real quick. And we're going to look at this because, you know, we got to understand that we, we need to know how to wait. He says, he says just, just wait on me. He says, I'm, I'm going to call you higher, but just wait. I'm going to call you higher. Acts chapter 1, and look at verse 4. Come on. 
Come on. It says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Jesus said. Hallelujah. They were perched, right? Yeah. Glory to God. He said, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, he hath heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, perched, when they were out there perched, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to, to know the times of the, or the seasons which the Father hath put in our own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now go, go, to, go to verse chapter 2 and verse 1 and, and look at what this says. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come... They were all with one accord in one place, see? Hallelujah. With one accord in one place. They were all perched in, and they, they, they were all, all perched in one place. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a, 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 of a rushing mighty wind. I'm telling you, wait, wait for the wind of God. Somebody better wait for the wind of God. Somebody better wait for the wind of God. He said, wait for my promise to come. Cause I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send my promise. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they, there appeared unto them clothing tongues like, uh, as of fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And, and, and now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, the, the, the Parthians and the Medes and the Alamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Syrian and strangers in, of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God, the wonderful works of God. And they were amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what mean is this? And then they said, others mocked, said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, but this, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, um, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath the blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before that, a notable day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus told his disciples to go up into the, the holy place. He told them to go up into the mountain, up, up into the, what is it? The upper room, he told them to go up to the upper room, and he told them to wait for the promise. I'm here to let you know God's telling us today. He's saying, go and wait. He says, wait 
for the promise. He says, I, I made a promise to you, and I showed you in your word that I keep my promise. He said, I'm not a God that I should lie. I'm not a man that I should lie. Neither are the son of man that I should repent. Hallelujah. They could have stayed in the upper room speaking in tongues and feeling lighter, but they had to take flight. They had to take flight. And many of us, we, we try to stay in the upper room. We don't want to come up out of the upper room. And we want to stay in the upper room and, and keep praying and praying and praying. And, and, and see, we got to understand that God, he wants to show us that he has already answered our prayer. And he said, listen, let the wind get beneath your wings. He said, let the wind get beneath your face. I want you to let the wind get beneath your face. Because see, it's your faith when you win, when you hold your, 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 when you win, when the wind gets beneath your wings, it's your faith that's going up. Yeah. And, 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 and do you trust me that if you, if you take that leap with the, do you trust me if you jump off the cliff that I'm gonna uphold you? Hallelujah. Do you trust me? They had to jump out there and do what they had been called to do. And God is saying, I done called so many of you and you're scared. To trust me. My God. They were called to be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And, and they jumped out. Them people, they, 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 they got filled with the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and Holy Ghost fell on them. And when it fell on them, they all started speaking in other languages. And they all poured out of the upper room. And they went out and they began to witness to God's people, and God said, I got a calling. I'm calling you higher. Well, Somebody say, higher. higher. I'm, calling I'm calling you higher. I'm calling you higher. I need, I need for somebody to hear me today. And God's saying, you, you, you know, many of you, many of you don't understand this calling that I have on your life. He said, I'm blowing, I've been blowing winds in your life. Yeah. Have you been having some trials? Have you been having some difficulties, some things that have been keeping you on your knees? <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you been going through some stuff in your life that you just don't understand? And you so, sometimes you get angry with God, like, God, why am I going through all of this? God said, I, it's a purpose for your pain here. Because I'm, I'm trying to get you to move. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to, 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 get, to understand that, 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 that when the winds blow in your life, when the waves begin to toss you to and fro, I'm doing something here. Yeah. And you don't want to move. You just keep staying perched. You're like, like the eagle. You saw it coming. You saw it in the distance coming to you. You saw it rising up. And, and, and you, you, instead of you uh, getting perched and then making up in your mind that God, Wherever you're going to take me here, we're going to do this together, God. I'm going to trust you. I trust you, God. I know that I can do this with you, God. And God begins to blow winds in our lives. He allows the wind to blow. Oh, my God. I don't know how much wind you've been dealing with. And I don't know what the wind has been doing for you. Has the wind been knocking you over? Has it been, has it been knocking down all, everything in your family? Knocking down your house? Has it been knocking down everything? Has it been destroying stuff in your life? God said, then that's not the wind that I wanted to send to you. I want you to understand the wind that I'm allowing in your life. Because the wind that I'm allowing in your life is supposed to take you higher. And it's supposed to get up under your wings of faith. And it's supposed to get up under your wings of faith. And as you stand there perched, and then you begin to feel lighter because you've been praying, you know, in that upper room. And you begin to feel lighter. God, I feel better. You don't stay there. You don't get to a place where you just stay there and you decide, okay, I got enough of you, God, and I'm going to move on. No, you don't stay there. Because if you stay there, what happens to you? The wind stops blowing, and then your wings fall down. And you stay, and you don't go anywhere. But God said, I had another step for you. He said, I had another step for you. I'm going to close with this. There's a story called The Eagle and the Chickens. A story about being who you are meant to be. There's an old, well-known story of a chicken farmer who found an eagle's egg. 
He put it with his chickens, and soon the egg hatched. The young eagle grew up with all the other chickens, and whatever they did, the eagle did too. He thought he was a chicken. <laughs> Just like the other chickens. Well. And since the chickens could only fly for a short distance, the eagle also learned to fly a short distance. Watch it now. <laughs> he thought that that was he thought that was what he was supposed to do. So that was all he thought he could do. As a consequence, that was all he was able to do. One day, the eagle saw a bird flying high above him. He was very impressed. He said, who was that? He asked the hens around him. That's the eagle, the king of the birds. The hens told him, he belongs to the sky. We belong to the earth. We're just chickens. Come on now. So the eagle lived and died as a chicken. For that's what he thought he was. Come on now, pick it up. I want to encourage you today that you are an eagle. You may have been brought up in a situation that limited your understanding of your potential. But it's time now for the past to lose its hold on you. Yeah. Don't die thinking you're a chicken. Yeah. Soar high just as you were meant to. Be all that you are meant to be. God is calling you higher. Stop clacking around like a chicken. You clap, clap, clapping around like a chicken. Clucking and clucking around like a chicken. Stop clucking around like a chicken. Lying just a little bit and being satisfied. Being all with all the other little chickens. And you're running around with the chickens and you're cluck, 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 clucking it with the chickens. Stop being satisfied clucking, clucking with the chickens. Because the chickens ain't going nowhere. They just flying, and jumping. And they, they only jump up. I, I, when I was down south with my grandmother, she had the chickens in a, in a chicken coop. Yeah. And, and, and we would go and, and feed the chickens. So we would throw feed, you know, uh, uh, what is it, um, corn or something to the, yeah. to the chickens. And <laughs> we would throw them to the chickens. The chickens would run around and, and they clucking down on the ground. Everything is on the earth. Everything is on the ground that they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just eat, eating everything. Just eating it up. And many of us are like chickens. We're cluck, clucking around. We want to be around with everybody else. But the eagle, see, the eagle soars up above. And he, he's alone. And most of the time, you know, I found that the eagle, he flies alone, baby. He don't need a bunch of cluck, cluckers around him. He don't need that. Because that's not what he's looking for. The eagle wants to fly high. The eagle wants to go above the situation. To see the chicken when the the storm comes, they're searching for a place to hide. They're running and they're they're searching for a place to hide. But I'm here to let you know, the eagle, he said, I'm going to go up above the storm. And the way that he goes up above the storm, he soars, baby. He soars. He don't be flapping his wings. He just waits for the storm to come. <laughs> hey, and I guess that's why, you know, when you see it in karate, they do this. You see Reverend Robin doing it a lot. You see if I can see Like that. Okay. Because they're ready to soar. You understand? And that's what God wants us to do. He wants to wait for, wait for your storm. Wait for the storm to come. Don't be afraid of the storm. I see it coming. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is going to be terrible. Oh, this is going to be terrible. No, God said, wait for the storm. Because I've got something for the storm. I'm ready. I, I want you to be ready for it. And I want you to begin to perch yourself. 
get in a purse position like, like wow. that eagle. And when you get in that purse position, that eagle, you know, and, and that storm comes, you see the storm come and you say, okay, here it comes. Here it comes. I ain't scurrying around like the mother chickens. Half cackling, cuckling, cuckling. What is it? Chuckling, chuck, cuckle. Cluck, cluckin'. <laughs> Forgot the word. That's it. Cluck, cluckin' around like the chickens. The chickens running around. They just, and let me tell you, the chickens are running around looking for, trying to find a place to, to, to run. And he said, ah, nah, I ain't got time to do that. Uh-uh. I'm waiting for this storm. He ready to ride that storm. Somebody better hear me here. And then he begins. He sees the storm coming and that wind. Out, the, the harder the winds come, the higher he flies. He begins to hold them. He begins to feel that thing. And when he feels the wind up under his wings, he begins to, to, to put, get up on his tippy toes and begin to get light, you know. Just get real light. How many of us like to feel that? I, I love to feel light after I, I, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I cried and I prayed and I cried and I get up off my knees and, and, and I feel better, so much better. Somebody better know what I'm talking about. When you pray, God will, he will lift stuff up off of you. But hallelujah, how many of us know I can't stay there? I got to be willing to fly. I got to be willing to take a leap of faith and jump off. All he wants you to do is take a jump. And as soon as you jump, he takes over. And you begin to soar. Hallelujah. 